Hey guys, welcome back. So, today I thought I'd put together some of my lamp work beads into a bracelet. And I tried two different ways. I wasn't really happy with the one way that I tried. Um, which was just stringing it. I mean, it wasn't bad. And I just added like a bunch of jump rings. Yes, I was experimenting. Those definitely don't work. I'll show you what I did here. Okay. So, they were kind of boring. So, I made a few with wire wrapped. And I kind of liked it better. So, that's what we're going to stick with. So I am just going to quickly grab a couple more of these um, bead caps and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are back and I have the camera really close. I'm not used to working this close, um, but I know that you have problems seeing me when I work. So I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for everybody. So I am using beadsmith wire. This is 24 gauge. And whenever I wire wrap, I go for 24 because it's easier to handle and you're not making just a loop so you know that it's not going to open up on you but I usually go very very close to the edge here okay and I don't do what everybody else does when I wrap I just wrap weird I wrap to whatever's easiest for me I don't follow any rules, and I know a lot of people do, but it doesn't seem to work when I try it that way. And I don't know what's going on with my wire cutters, but they are horrible right now. I can't seem to cut into anything. Okay, so on these little green, these are just some apple green beads that look like they matched pretty darn good with the green in there. And then the aqua was about as close as I could get to the blue, although I could probably go a little darker. Um, I didn't have any real small ones. <gasps> And I just messed that up, guys. Oh, darn. Ah, I hate when I do that. These are supposed to have a bead cap on them. Give you a little bit more silver into this bracelet. If I'm using silver or gold metal, I like to put enough in there. Um, I hate when people just use beads for spacers. Because I think the metal really, really brings out the piece. All right, so now are these the right ones that I wanted to use? I don't think so. Maybe they are. I don't know where I got these, but they're the cutest little jump rings or little bead caps. And I messed up on that one too. These look different than the other ones. That's what I was worried about. So I grabbed the wrong ones here. So it's these that I want. These I do not. These are beautiful, but those aren't the ones that I was using before. Alright, so let's just get a couple out here. I need to find out where I think um, there's a beading subscription that I belong to called bargain bead box and I think that's where I've got these caps from and they have the most unique and cute caps but it seems like half of the stuff in my subscription boxes is either copper brass or gold I don't seem to get a whole lot of silver 
in their stuff, which I wish they would put a little more silver in there. I don't use gold much because of the fact that the gold that they give out is so yellow. I have ordered on AliExpress because they seem to have the KC gold which is just another word for imitation um, carrot gold but it's a lot more of a subtle gold than it is yellow usually I wait until this is on the bead before I clean it up All right, I think that's situated better it's just easier for me to grab it so we are just going to wrap all of these and then we'll assemble. This one I made a little too long. I only wanted to do two wraps. And I will clean up the metal afterwards. Right now we're just going to concentrate on putting them on. So, I have this little towel here. Let me move this over a little bit. And that way I can see how big these are going to be. And know how many I'm going to need. So this one's done. And this one's done. So this one I have to redo because I forgot the bead caps. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to go small, and again on the little ones, I'm just doing two wraps. And I love using 24 gauge, because I can use my fingers. I have no idea why I'm holding this while I'm doing that. I use the right bead cap. I don't want to make that mistake again. I don't know how well wired wrap stuff sells. I never see them like advertise. I'd never see them like pennies, Macy's, or I know that's fine jewelry, so it's not anything of what we're doing. You don't see a whole lot of wire wrap out there. I know that a lot of makers, they definitely use a lot of wire wrap jewelry. But with me, I don't know. I mean, I've got a lot of strung jewelry made that didn't sell on my last show, so maybe if I mix it up, I'll have better luck, right? So I'm using small jump rings, but you want to make sure that it's kind of a thick gauge because you don't want these to open up. I would like to go thicker on these, but I don't have them. And yeah, I know I shouldn't be using my fingers, but and that's probably why my hands are so calloused, right? Okay, so that one's done. I'm just going to clean this one up, as you can see. be okay okay so we're gonna open this one up 
I don't see what one full link is. And then decide how many I'm going to need to wire around. So starting at zero here, this is already three inches. So basically, I just need three more. So I've already got the little one. So all I'm going to need are two more of these. And of course, I want to make them even. Okay, so that one's about the same size. And that one's the same size. Okay, so let me get some more wire. It's like a slinky. And I can never find where my end is. There it is. And we're doing two more. I don't think we're going to need that much, but... Yeah, I don't know what I do with my wire cutters. And they're like brand new, too. I go through so many brands. I mean, I started with a Lindstrom. Um, I think those were my first really good pliers or cutters that I bought. But in between, you've got those two little black things right here, kind of like this you know to keep the tension and they slip out and they kept breaking and you know I spent like 50 bucks on those and I didn't think they were that great but I really expected these to last longer than they have okay so I'll clean that up once the bead is on. So when I do the lamp work beads and wire, I don't put lamp work against wire to make a, a loop. I always put either a metal bead or a gemstone or a crystal. There's always something um, before the other one. And that just so you don't scratch your, your clay bead. That's a little low. So when I get to the bigger ones, I put three hoops on this, not two. On the small ones, I just do two. Okay, I don't know what I did here. I got all kind of turned upside down here. Okay, so now we have three. You know what works great? The best thing to use on this is a bent nose plier. This is where you can have your hands where they are. And then just kind of bend it. I think it's a little too long. Okay, I don't really like this wire wrap that I did. Yes, I am very anal. If I don't like it, I'm going to pull it right off. It's a little flimsy and it's a little longer than it should have been. So here we go again. It's always that one side that's going to be completely different than that other side and then I've got to redo it. I uh, hope this is long enough. It probably is. It's not. <laughs> Okay, this is why you go through a lot of wire doing this. You should start way down here just to make sure. All right, so that's a little better. The other one was pointed down. And so it was being cut at an angle. And that just didn't work. Now we're pretty much even. 
Now we just got to make sure the other side is the same. And hopefully this, oh boy, am I cutting this very short. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work. Gosh darn it. Should have thought about that. I don't know if I'm going to get two or three on here. But if it's a two, I'll keep it at the end. So this will be my end piece. And that way I don't have to worry about redoing this one. Because obviously you want it to be consistent. And I'm not even going to get two out of this. Son of a gun. Okay, guys. I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to finish what I'm doing. And then I'll come right back. All right. So I think we got it fixed. I only did one. Oh, I'm going to be good and I'm not going to use my fingers. You know, it works so much better. When you got that one favorite tool that seems to do a million different things. One more. I've got small wrists. They're about six and a half to six and three quarters, I think. And everybody says that the average wrist is about seven, seven twenty-five. All right. So what are we looking at here now? Mm, so we're about five. So let's do one more of the green. It just doesn't seem like that many beads for a bracelet. Three beads. It just it just seems odd to me. And I get that size is the factor, but it just seems really weird that that's all I've got on this. So I usually just bend it down and then wrap it two times. Okay. Yes, we're going to cut it a little longer so that I don't make that mistake again. And if I feel like I've gotten too big, then I will just take my pliers and I will roll it down and then reset that. Because oh, sometimes I pull a little bit too much. Now, if you were doing a loop, you would take that bead and you would bend the wire, cut it at about a quarter of an inch or an, like that, and then make the loop. When I wire wrap, I get really close to the bead before I bend it. Because if not, then you're making a really long, long little tail here. Okay. I don't remember me fixing this, but I don't see one sticking out. Okay, so now we're going to do one more. And because we have the jump rings in the center, oh, this is a nice one. This is nice and hard. Um, we're going to add some dangles because why not? We've got to fill that middle up somewhere. Okay, so again, now we're about six, six and a half. By the time I put a clasp on it, it should be... Perfect. So let's find a clasp. And since we got flowers, why don't we do a flower clasp? I like using 
toggles, as you know. <laughs> I cannot use anything else because it's really hard for me to grab a clasp. But I also give people choices. So if somebody wants an actual, um, like a just a regular lobster claw, then I'll go ahead and change them out at that point. So on this one, I want thick, thick jump rings so that these stay on. So these are a little thicker. Okay, and usually on the side with the tail, I will add two. And look at me, I'm actually putting things away after I use it. That's a first. But I've been dropping these when the lids are off. So I've learned too many times that I will drop everything. All right, so we're going to do, yeah, so these are nice and thick. These are heavy duty. Even that won't work. And this is perfect. Okay, and then on this one, again, we have two of them. I guess it doesn't really matter. I could have left that one open. And you can also add a couple extra on here. And that way customers have a couple of them. I usually bring jump rings and everything to the show anyways. Because I'm always adjusting there. So, as you can see, wow, this just barely fits me. Okay, so this just barely going on me. So I might want to add one more jump ring here, but I'll do that later. So right now we got to think of what we're going to put in the middle of these. Um, what other color would go with blue and green to contrast? Do I want to keep it all the same color? So, but I think some leaves or something would look great. So let me go pull out some leaves and I'll be right back. Alrighty, well, we found a bunch of stuff. So I still have all these. So I could make another one and have it strung. Let's move all those out of here. Let me show you what we got. So this was interesting. I found these check glass leaves. And I was looking at them going, well, that's interesting because it's got the blue, right? It's got the blue in there. It's actually got the lime green in there. And look, it's got the translucent color of the bead in there. And I'm like, this might actually work. So, one, two, three, four, five. I took five out. Now let's try that. And then, what else do I do? Do I add some purples? No, because it's all blue and green. and I don't know. Purple might have worked. And then I thought yellow. Yes, I know yellow is going to make it really springy. Especially these. These are really bright. So I don't know if I want them that bright. Then I've got kind of like these translucent yellows. They're little cones. I think those would look really good in there. Let's see if I have about five of those. Oh, I got these little hearts. 
Those are also like a translucent yellow. All right, how about I pour these out? And let's see what we got in there. I hate pouring them out because then I got to put all these back in. But we're just going to grab some. We're going to wire wrap them. I also have these daggers. So we got a lot of options here. These are really cute too. Those are like little little teeny lentils. Those might work. So sometimes too many options is not a good thing. All right. So you know, I got these little tiny leaves. And I've got these little tiny seed beads. So that might help on the wire. So I'm just going to grab a bunch of those. Okay, grab another one of those. These are more lemony. Okay, so I think I got most everything that I need. A couple more daggers. Alright, and if I run out, I got another bag of these. I got these from Sam's Bead Shop. Sometimes they just throw a bunch of different check glass in bags. And it's pretty cool. Because then you got an assortment of glass and colors that you can use. And this is only $6.50 for a two ounce mix. And you get quite a few beads. I mean, look at that. You get quite a few beads in that. Okay, so the other thing I found was citrine. Look at that. I thought this would also look really good with this. So I am leaning on using these as one of them because I really like that. Okay, and then you've got these. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and hit pause and I'm going to wire wrap some of these. And um, I'll show you how I wire wrap these. I'm not very good at that. I will tell you that. But because these are top drilled, you kind of have to put them on like this and put them up like that and then kind of twist them back and forth like that. Okay, and then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hold this and that's the one I want to go straight up. So this is the one that I want to go sideways. And you're going to cut that extra piece off. <clears throat> okay, and then you're going to come in here. And you're going to make your other hoop. Now you could use a jump ring. But that doesn't usually work very well for me. And then you just come in here and you wire wrap it the rest of the way. So it takes a little bit of time. And yes, there are a lot of screw-ups at the same time. So that's why I'm going to hit pause as I work on these. Okay. So there you go. Now you can wire wrap straight on these but since these hoops open up I'm gonna leave them so I'm gonna go wire wrap a couple of these we'll see how they look and I'll be right back alrighty guys so we are back and I think we're ready to assemble it just seems really weird that I just got a little bit of connections in here still trying to get used to just one 
one blue bead or just four of these is all I'm making and I do that because then I go to the other side and we're going to put this big lemon bead on looks more like a banana I have a glass that's called banana and it's like two different tones of yellow so you got kind of like a bright yellow and a, a pale yellow Okay, so those two are done. And I don't know what happened to this. But I'm missing a jump ring. So again, on one side, I'll put a blue and one of these daggers on. And then the other side can be one of these little bananas. Okay, I'll do that on this side. It was much easier actually taking the jump ring off and doing it. I like that much better. Then I only have to close this once. That was that one. And then I can put the yellow right on that. Okay. So there's that. That one's separate. I don't know if I want to put any more on. I started with those three. If it looks good enough, I'm just going to leave it alone. So one, two, three, four, and we got one more to put them on. So I'm not impressed with the beadsmith wire. The reason for that. It kept snapping on me. When I'm done with this one, I will show you what I mean. So beware with buying. Oh, it might not. Yeah, I think it was Beadsmith. It's not Beadalon. It's Beadsmith. And I'll show you a really quick example. This is a huge thing, too. I bought this at a beach shop when I went to the beach. Now watch, it won't do it while I'm showing you, but maybe it will. So in order to do these, you have to sit there like that. Okay, and that I usually bend up. And that's kind of bent down. Make this at a 90 degree. No, just about right there. Okay, and then every time held them and wrapped them <laughs> I told you it wasn't gonna do it all right so anyways it would break it would just like snap so I went to another wire that I had called para wire and I didn't have any problems with that one so maybe it was just an area in the strand that was bad I don't know I've had it happen many times before 
So I don't know if wire gets brittle after a while. So make sure you get yourself some good quality wire so that doesn't happen. Okay. So I don't think I need that. I don't want to put it near the clasp because it just makes it harder. And somehow I cut myself. This is what happens when you get old and your skin starts to get very thin. A lot of you will know what I'm talking about. That anything that you grab it seems to just hurt. And you just brush against something and you're bleeding for no reason. Alright, so I remember this being a little small. So I'm going to take this off. This way I may be able to add another bunch of dangles onto the end yet. I don't know. Alright, so let's see how this fits me. And this is a thin one. This was the one thing that was on my desk, so I'm going to have to change that one because that's too thin for a clasp. Okay, and you know me putting on a bracelet, so I'm going to do this outside of the camera. Alrighty, and I kind of think that the apple beads could be a little bigger. So I may end up doing that. But anyways, there is our bracelet. And here it is fall and I'm making springy stuff. But that's what it looks like. Let me put it on a tile. Maybe you'll be able to see it a little better. So that was fun, and I like all the colors, but again, it's springy <laughs> in the fall. So, I don't know, maybe people can buy it for a gift. People like that color, they're going to wear it. So, I hope you like that, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys, so I came back really quick because I ended up making the other bracelet, and this one I kept strung. Um, so the one we worked on yesterday obviously was wired, and then this one is strung, and what I did was I ended up putting a couple jump rings here and there and attach the charms to the jump rings. So that way you can still have dangles on a stringed, on a stringed, oh my gosh, on a, on a stringed bracelet. Um, and that's how you get away with it. Just add a little of these. Or you can add those little metal bars that have the loop and hang a charm off of that. But it didn't go with these very well, so I just left it like that. So, hope you like that, and we'll see you hopefully soon. Talk to you then. Bye.